with, which is right. relative to your fighting. And so the dialogue, to me, is real important, you know, to have someone who's actually in it to, to help me with, you know, what, you know, I can throw something out there, but it might not sound legitimate at all. Gotcha. And then, of course, you know, where I'm talking about writing a piece for an eight-year-old girl, you know, what's a year, how does an eight-year-old girl say something, you know, and so if I can even get a young, younger, I mean, they don't have to be quite that young, but right. a younger actress to come in and stuff, so I'm excited Sounds to Sounds like a that. lot of fun. Yeah, me too. It is, and I'm excited for you to uh, even just read the piece, um, because I feel like this, this being my third one, the other two, I was learning a lot, but this is the one I'm really going to push. I cool. really would like to see it. And and even like I've talked to Tony Dong about, you know, if we did choose to do this here in Salina, you know, the cage that he, I mean, we could do this whole thing here. We could do the film here. Yeah. Uh, you know, we brought, you know, with that last film I did, we brought like eight, ten SAG actors out of L.A. into into Lindsburg, Kansas. I mean, it can be done. Yeah. In fact, there's a lot of cost savings to doing things here versus out in L.A. Instead of traveling. Mm -hmm. So... So anyway, we got some things on projects to go, and you be sure and keep in touch. You know, if you've got something come up, a fight coming up, I'd like to, you know, have you contact us, and we could even have you back to talk about it. Okay. When you're all primed and ready, and you're looking to get your uh, fan base coming, wherever that could be. So. Yeah. And and uh, you have a good picture I can put up from my blog. Absolutely. I'd like to, I put a blog up on Salina Post. I don't know if you ever go on Salina Post, but they're getting like, actually, Matt Moody, our web director, said they're almost up to 6,000 unique hits a day. Really? That's unheard of for a wow. community this size. And it would be great to get if you have a professional photo or one that you want. And I'd like to just do a little blog yeah, about this absolutely. interview. Absolutely. You just want me to email it to you? Yeah. Okay. I'll, email, I'll email it to I'll you. I'll do that right after this. Up. Cool. So, well, thank you again. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. It's always good time. <laughs> this is Joan with the Joan Yurkovich Show, and we're glad to be here with our second segment in our morning program, Saturdays, 9, 10, KINA at 9 a.m. Of course, I keep telling you that you can go to joanyurkovich.com to see the video of this interview and also listen to the podcast. But right now for this segment, we're here with Adrienne Gafter. She's a clinical exercise physiologist who has her master's in exercise science so I think we've got someone who's very well qualified to talk about what I want to promote as you know a discussion here about uh, obesity here in Kansas and I'm going to go ahead and start with just one quick fact because this just came out this month here J July 2011 Kansas now ranks 16th overall with the percentage of Kansans who are obese more than doubling in the past 15 years 29% of our adult population are now obese, and Kansas was the fourth fastest growing growth toward obesity in the nation since 95. In 95, we were ranked 36, now we're 16th. Is that what you're seeing some of within your practice? We are uh, seeing a lot more people with weight management problems significant amount. Mm -hmm. uh, not only, Joan, is that happening amongst the adults, it's pervasive with children and adolescents. Mm -hmm. The obesity rate in children and adolescents has tripled since 1980 in that population. Wow. And it's, it's a frightening thing just mm -hmm. because of what happens with the different disease states and things that occur with being overweight. And, and so are you actually seeing, I mean, I always felt like youth might protect them a little bit from the disease states, but you're seeing those coming in, I'm assuming we're talking high blood pressure, diabetes, high blood with pressure, the children? Absolutely. Wow. High blood pressure, um, insulin resistance problems, mm -hmm. early signs of hyperlipidemia or high cholesterol levels, and in obesity children. levels that are significantly higher than what we'd like to see. So when we talk obesity, we're not just talking about the kids that are just overweight. You know, so how much, where, where, do those, where do those barriers go? You know, I mean, we, you know, we've moved from years ago, the chubby little kid isn't even probably in the obese category that they're in today. So how many pounds overweight or what, what is, how does that fall where you go from overweight to obesity? And at what point are you really trying to target some of those kids? Well, I think the problem is we're not targeting them nearly soon enough. Oh. And, mm. you know, statistically, 67% of the American population is overweight or obese. 
So we're talking 60, 70 percent. Now you're taking this from obesity down into even just being overweight. That's huge. It's huge. That's, that's frightening. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Go ahead. So, you know, in light of that, the health care dollars that are going to come down the line with these younger and younger people that are getting diabetes, having high blood pressure, more prone to stroke and heart attack, and I think, honestly, the pervasive thing that will really cause problems are our youth becoming diabetics. Right. Um, they also have a lot of issues with joint problems, with a lot of other things. And, you know, honestly, Joan, I think what really concerns me is the fact that when you're heavy as a child, um, you actually grow fat cells until puberty. Oh, okay. I mean, we've all heard about these know. fat cells. You grow fat cells into puberty. And once you have puberty, you don't grow fat cells anymore. Mm -hmm. Fat cells always want to be full. So when children are obese when they're young, the tendency for them to be obese as adults is significantly higher than people who gain weight later in life. So it's kind of a double negative in mm -hmm. regard to mm -hmm. that. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because, I mean, I've always heard about fat cells. I'll tell you from my perspective, I'm looking for some easy way to get rid of them. <laughs> I heard there's some crazy device out there that sucks them in and freezes them, and then they kind of... I'm sure there <laughs> are a few of those things out there. Well, believe it or not, I think it's FDA approved, so I'm hot on the trail of that. There but, you go. But, uh, but I do believe in prevention, too. So I guess I didn't even think about the fact or know the fact that, that fat cells do uh, develop through puberty, so you really don't want to have childhood obesity. You really don't want those cells growing with your children, which, like you said, then predisposes them to being heavier as adults. Significantly, yes. Now, now why does that happen, or how does that happen, if you can explain that? Because even though those cells are there, let's say they lose the weight, is there something that drives them to wanting? You said they want to be fat. Right. Cells, all cells like to be full. Okay. So once you have a cell that's mm -hmm. functioning, and a fat mm -hmm. cell, of course, and is a different type of cell than a blood vessel mm -hmm. cell or anything else, fat cells like to be full. They all like cells be... like to be full. Mm -hmm. And the problem is you don't want cells full of fat, obviously, because that's how we put all of our weight on. Mm -hmm. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, the other side of that, besides just the weight issue, is problems with the psychological issues with children. Oh, yes. The bullying, the teasing, mm -hmm. and you end up with lower self-esteem. Yes. And you grow up with that level of self-esteem that causes you to feel like food is a comfort for you. So mm -hmm. not only do we have issues with the fat in and of itself, we have kids who don't feel like they're worth anything, and so they secure their needs by eating. Mm -hmm. And we don't encourage exercise like we used to. Mm -hmm. Technological mm -hmm. advances are incredible which has allowed our children to sit on the couch. But they do. And I, I read, you know, over six hours a day to with something sedentary, and that's probably an underestimation yeah, 7. for Yeah, 7.5 now is the yeah. average age, uh, average hours of video, computer, television time per day for adolescents. 7.5. 7.5. Four hours it. of TV. Mm -hmm. The rest is video games. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And I will tell you, I have a slender soccer playing son who can play Xbox Live with his friends, talk on his phone, text on his <laughs> phone, and play his Nintendo DS at the same time. Yes, yes. They can multitask as children. But I, I really concerns me about the lack of activity our kids have. So do you think that's a major component to this, to this obesity problem? I mean, of course we know they're eating too much or the wrong kinds of foods and they're inactive. Which of those two would you say is the biggest issue we have? Oh, Activity or um, intake? Excellent question. I, don't, I do not know the answer to that. Really? I think it kind of depends on the family. Mm -hmm. You know, we do know that lower income families have more trouble with healthy eating. The cost of vegetables and fruit are a lot more expensive on a limited income than a box of macaroni and cheese. Right. And so people are driven to that. We're also driven to fast food and convenience stores. Um, which is a real problem because you don't generally find higher fiber, lower fat items in those places. Well, and what about, do you run into people too, because I know this is a factor that I feel, and I can speak for it myself, I love that high fat, salty food. It almost becomes an addiction for me. I mean, you know, do you find that it's harder to steer children, even if they're offered, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables, away from the higher fat, salt content, processed foods? Absolutely. 
You know, if you ever see the movie Super Size Me, yes. one of the things that's very apparent in that is by the end of the movie, he indicates he was craving that food, even though mm -hmm. he felt horrible, the worst he had ever felt, mm -hmm. sluggish, tired, fatigued. I don't know the mechanism of why that occurs, but once you eat higher fat, higher salt foods, your body tends to continue to want that type of food, and it's hard to turn away from that. And, and I think there really is something to that, and I know there was a new program on Oprah's new network uh, about this very thing, which was about food addiction. And it also not only addressed people who had an addiction to foods and were obese, it also addressed poor eating habits for anorexics and those types of people on the other end of the spectrum. I thought it was very interesting that they approached the whole eating thing on both sides of the spectrum as kind of a same kind of addictive process. But one of the quotes I got in my research is says, one can think of habitually eating processed foods as a hard to crack addiction. I mean, it is like an addiction. Absolutely. And, and there is, and that's what they brought out because this one woman that um, had such an addiction to fast food literally was like an addict laying in the bed, just writhing, feeling so horrible, you know, from, from having to steer clear of that and into non-processed foods. So, so, so we have an addiction process, or we're teaching our children to crave those types of foods. Have you ever come up with a way or found a way to stop that process, stop that addiction, that craving? I wish I could, because if I did, Oprah would be on my show, <laughs> which is one of my classic lines. We have got to do a better job of educating. Yeah. And the problem with children is most obese children have obese parents mm -hmm. and it's a very bad cycle and hard to educate certain populations that even though all of us know every one of us know high fiber low fat eating right. and regular exercise are important parts of our day mm -hmm. because we live such a disposable life anymore run through the fast foods eat in the car on the way to another activity or, or another thing we don't sit down at the dinner table, John, with our families anymore. Right, right. We don't take the time to eat slowly, talk about our day, mm -hmm. know when we're full. True. And we do things quickly without a lot of thought. And it's very difficult to eat healthy. That's the other issue with it. To prepare foods takes time. It's more expensive to eat Correct. fruits and vegetables right. and higher quality things. And we are so busy in our lives, we don't take the time to take care of ourselves. And the processed foods too, a couple of reasons they've come into being and become so popular is they're cheaper and they have a better shelf life. Because how many times have you bought the fruits and vegetables and looked in the, sh in the drawer and thought, okay kids, they're here, why didn't you eat them and now I just get to throw them out. You know, and I'm sure families that have, you know, a, a tight budget or a lower income aren't going to aren't going to want to do that, aren't going to want to look at those things that aren't getting, getting eaten. And then, like you said, so many mothers and fathers are both working, so, so so many people don't have time to cook. It takes a lot of time to prepare those home-cooked, fresh, non-processed foods. And I can speak for a friend of mine who's a dietitian working here at Heartland Head Start. People don't know how to cook. That was my next comment. They don't know how to prepare foods anymore, right. other than opening the package, putting the wa exactly. boiling water in, and... Mixing we're, it up. We're almost back to, you know, the, their level of cooking is back to the college days of ramen noodles. Is that you know? not absolutely <laughs> right? Like, you know, if you can pour some hot water in it, you can call that cooking. But, you know, it's interesting how, you know, that's one of the things with that wonderful program we at least have trying to teach people how to cook. Besides the fact they don't even have, you know, the cooking utensils. Um, they, you know, they don't, uh, she has a program where sometimes she'll try to say, let me show you what you can cook with one electric skillet. Absolutely. And then I heard the stories about some of those people having to run the electrical cord because their electricity got cut off to the neighbor's house. <laughs> it's, it's pretty sad. And they're cooking on the porch. And that's one segment of it. But to be honest, you know, the other thing that, you know, we're talking about some of the poverty being linked to, uh, being linked to some of the obesity, but for the first time in history, I read a quote, for the first time in history, the poor are fat and the rich are thin. And you know, and, and you used to think if you go back historically, it was a sign of affluence to be heavy Correct. because you had an abundance. And you know, so we're, we're, we're switching that around. Yes, and not only are the poor heavy, they're malnourished. You're so right about that. That's a frightening prospect. Tell me more about that. Well, it's frightening. and I